Lord, be with us today. Be with us as we move into a new year. Renew within us a sense of your purpose, a sense of your presence. Renew with, within us uh, the desire just to live with you in all that we do. Teach us the things that we should be thinking about, the things that we should be doing, the way we should be living our lives, the, 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 the things that we should regularly do to just be open to your love, to your presence, to your means of grace. Help us to be disciplined and committed to you this year so that we might be filled with your presence and know your love and grace in all of our life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. I'm going to do things a little differently and I'm going to sit down here. Uh, today, and uh, I did this last week, and I liked it. So yeah. I'm trying to do it again uh, uh, this week and uh, just see where we go. But I want us to, to start off by looking at, actually, we're looking at John 15, 7 through 11. And uh, we're using the New Revised Standard Version. Verses 7 through verses 11. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Mark, come on in. There's a seat in here for you. You don't have to stand out there. Um, the mission of Rising Hope is to bring the life-transforming power of Christ and the support of the church to the least, the lost, the lonely, and the left out in our community. You've all probably heard me say that many, many times, haven't you? Um, what's but what is mission? What is mission? What is a mission statement? Anybody want to take a stab? What is, what is mission? It's okay. my Mark? commitment to do something. My goal to achieve my goal a commitment to do something. Yes, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's what we do. It's the work that we engage in. Uh, with purpose, with with meaning. Um, the mission of a school is to educate. The mission of the police department is to protect and to serve. The mission of Rising Hope Mission Church is to bring the life-transforming power of Christ uh, to the least, the lost, the lonely, and the left out in our community. The vision of Rising Hope is to manifest the love of God in such a contagious manner that the good news of the gospel will be undeniable. The kingdom of God is at hand. Wait, okay. like they're doing, um, remember in the United States, all the banks closed, mm -hmm. a lot of missions ago, telling people live there and do what they do for, uh, and a lot of people lost their jobs. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of banks went out of business, and everybody was looking for a mission. What is vision? 
what is vision? I've shared with you what the vision of Rising Hope is. Uh, Proverbs tell us that a people without vision perish. So vision must be awfully important for us if we perish with, without it. Um, it's, vision is something like mission, but uh, uh, it, it, mission I see is kind of what we are doing and, and how we do it, what we're going about. But vision I see is what we're we're, we're reaching for, where we're moving towards, what we're trying to attain. It's, a, a, it, it, it's, it's the ability to see what it is that, that God has in store for us and to move towards that. that. Our vision is to be moving towards where God wants us to go. The best way to encourage a, a, a child in school is to instill within them a, a, a vision of, of how much better their life can be with an education. The, the, uh, the best way for a, a, a team to become a winning team is to instill within them a vision of what all of that hard work and, and dedication is, is going to do, how that's going to help them achieve what they're searching for reaching out for. The best way to help the church become the church that God intends it to be is to instill a vision of what God wants for us and that the power of the Holy Spirit is there to move us, to attain what it is that God wants. At our New Year's Eve uh, watch night service, we we, we talked about that just a minute ago. Uh, we sang a song by uh, William McDowell, I Won't Turn Back, or I, I Won't Go Back. I Won't Go Back. And there's a line in that song that says, I've been changed in the presence of the Lord. I've been healed, freed, and delivered. You know, the, the, the vision of, of what... God is doing for us, and as a matter of fact, it's not only a vision, they're claiming it. They're making it a reality. It's not just something that's, that, that they're hoping for, but they're, they're living it out. Um, then there's a line, uh, 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 the chorus in the song, a soaring chorus that says, I won't go back. I can't go back to the way I used to be before your presence came and changed me. The danger, the danger for any congregation is that they lose their fire. The fire that they had when, when they started. When a person first comes to Christ, when a congregation first gets organized, there is fire and passion you see there. And, and, and that fire and passion seem to drive everything forward. And, and you have a sense that the presence of the Lord is here. God is making all things new. God's, God's making things wonderful. But it's so easy to backslide. It's so easy to lose so vision. It's so easy to, to lose that sense of God's presence. You know, God's always present. You know, it's not like God is more present, you know, now than He ever was. God's always here. It's our awareness. It's our receptivity uh, uh, of God's presence. You know, uh, it, it, it's the presence of God that, that uh, if it's not nurtured, by intentional faith development, that, that fire goes out. You know, we need to nurture that relationship, that presence with God. I'm going to go off script right now because, you know, the last couple of months, um, I, 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 I've been concerned. I've been concerned because even with our ten guests, we've got a lot fewer people here in the sanctuary than we used to have. 
And, you know, I'm, uh, where are we missing out? I know that if we were walking in the presence of the Lord, people would be flocking. They'd be flocking here. So, what's what's missing? What you know? Where what what's happening that 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 fire, that sense of God's presence, just isn't as as uh, well. It's interesting. I can't say God's not here because there's sometimes I have felt really in, in our praise and singing this morning. I just you know God. I, I, I at least I open myself up to God's presence. And, and I, I was able to feel it. Well, really this sermon, think of this as, as a way of what can we be doing? What is God calling us to do as a congregation so that, so that His presence is here and people flock to His presence? Toward the end of his life in 1786, uh, John Wesley said these words. He said, I'm not afraid that the people called Methodist should ever cease to exist in Europe or America. But I am afraid, Wesley said, lest they should exist only as a dead sect, having the form of religion without the power. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and saved me. <coughs> Changed me. That's what I want us to start wrest wrestling with as, I almost said it with my Oklahoma accent, wrestling with. <laughs> uh, 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 Oklahoma, by the way. So, um, but... Uh, Jesus said in John 15, Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Frank, Cheryl, come on in. Yeah, come on in. We're, we're, we're okay. So, Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them will bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. And such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and burned. Abiding in Christ, staying in the presence <coughs> of God, not going back, has something to do with bearing fruit. Something to do with bearing fruit or else we wither. A fruitful congregation, a congregation that is living out God's purposes, is going to have a genuine culture of hospitality. It's going to have authentic worship. It's going to have meaningful faith development. It's going to have life-changing outreach. And it's going to have a sense of extraordinary, uh, uh, selfless generosity. Those are important things to, to think about. Those should be part of our vision of what it is that we are trying to be and become, to, uh, to manifest the kingdom of God in such a contagious manner that it's undeniable that, you know, of the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. Fruitfulness. Fruitfulness in the scripture is a metaphor for the fulfillment and the realization of our God-given purpose. God created us to bear fruit. That's why we were made. We were to bear fruit for the kingdom. 
And if we aren't bearing fruit, then we're not living our purpose, and we end up withering, and we end up dying. The expectation for fruitfulness is seen throughout all of the scripture, from the beginning in Genesis, where God tells humanity to, to be fruitful, to be fruitful and multiply. And, and, and this fruitfulness is, is, is a response of gratitude. Our fruitfulness is a response to God's fruitfulness. God created the heavens and the earth and everything that is within it, and he said it was good, and he put it here for us. And our response is to be fruitful in return. You go all the way to the end of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, and you see fruitfulness throughout. In, in Revelation, uh, uh, you see the, uh, the uh, creation of a, of a river flowing through the, the holy city. Uh, uh, and on either side of this river is, uh, it, 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 it are trees, uh, trees of life that, that are bearing fruit, uh, new fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Fruitfulness. Jesus teaches about fruitfulness through stories and sayings in all four of the Gospels. In Matthew, Jesus describes the life of a disciple in terms of fruitfulness. He says, every good tree bears fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. The difference that someone can make stems from interior qualities of character and motive, and most important, their relationship to God. The difference a church makes is, uh, comes from the same interior qualities of their motive, their, their character, and their relationship with God. How are we doing in our relationship with God? How are you as individuals doing? Because it, it starts there. But then how are we doing as a congregation and helping support each other in deepening our relationship with God. Mark tells the story of, of a time when Jesus was feeling hungry, and, and he sees a fig tree that is not bearing fruit, and he curses the fig tree. Luke tells the story of the parable of a farmer who, who scattered seed all across the ground, and, and some of that seed fell on rocks, and dried out, and some of it was choked by weeds, and some of it fell on good soil, and it grew, producing an abundant harvest. Jesus said, let, let anyone with ears hear, let them listen. We're going to have all kinds of obstacles in our life. We're going to have all kinds of failures in our life. A disciple works steadfastly and with hope in spite of whatever obstacles or failures come in the way. A disciple is going to trust God for the harvest. Not give up, but keep moving forward. Because you trust and believe in God's Word. That God is good. And that God has got your back. And that God is going to bear fruit in your life and in this world if we stay connected in that life-giving relationship with God. In John's Gospel, Jesus describes the relationship between life and God and fruitfulness this way. He says, 
I am the vine, you are the branches, those who abide in me and I in them will bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. It's in the power of God. It takes our desire. It takes our commitment. But it's God's power. And we need to trust and believe and keep our hope in God. My Father is glorified, said Jesus, by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Plural. Notice that, that he's saying that God wants us to work together. Work together to make it happen. It's what we do together. And you know, that's, that's one of the powerful things about what we do accomplish for God here. What, what fruit God does bear through our efforts, comes when we work together Amen. to make the food pantry, or the clothing closet, or the Bible studies, or the meals, you know, or just the sense of welcome and presence. We, we, we care about you. Come on in. What is it that we say? God loves you and you can't do a thing about it? When we have that sense and that attitude and invite people in, there's a lot of people that are just looking for that kind of acceptance. A lot of people, you know, did I say this in last week's sermon? But I think a lot of, uh, 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 I think the need to be loved is probably a greater need than, than, than any other thing in our life. You know, I mean, you think about, yeah, we need, a, we need a house, we need shelter, we need food. But if you've got all that and you're not loved, what good is it? What good is it? That's material. The disciples of Jesus Christ bore a whole lot of fruit for the kingdom. They healed, they taught, and they served. Are you a disciple of Christ? Yes. Are you? Are you a disciple of Christ? Then you will find yourself healing and teaching and serving. The disciples of Christ confronted evil and, and they sought justice. All the while that they were showing God's mercy while they were bringing this vision of what God really wants, the justice that God wants in the world. Are we disciples of Jesus Christ here? Are we? Well, then, then, then we too will find ways that, that we will confront evil and that we will seek justice. All the time that, that, that we are acting this way in mercy, show, sowing seeds of, of God's peace, The disciples of Jesus offered God's forgiveness. They proclaimed God's peace, God's reign. They changed their lives, carrying in their words and their work the message of God's love in Jesus Christ. Is rising hope a congregation that seeks to follow Christ? then we're going to offer forgiveness. We're going to proclaim God's reign. And we're going to do that through allowing God to change our lives. Change our lives in a way that that love of God in Jesus Christ will be manifest in us, in our words and in our works. The gift of the Holy Spirit was in those first disciples because they connected to God through Jesus Christ. Their life bore fruit because in Christ, the Holy Spirit empowered them to bear fruit. If you are in Christ, you are going to bear fruit. 
There's no way not to bear fruit if you're in Christ. Because that's what we were created to do. It may not always look like the way you want it to look. You and I, I know I do. I know I really want to tell God what I think the outcome should be. But it's not always my desire. Sometimes God's got bigger plans, different plans. Sometimes God wants us to be sowing the seed yes. and someone else will That's reap right. the harvest. That's right. That's right. In John Wesley's day, the Church of England was in need of a, of a great revival. And under Wesley's leadership, the Holy Spirit took hold and tens of thousands of people gave their life to Christ. They cleaned up their lives. They, they welcomed all that were in need. They, they passionately were singing their praises in, in worship. They were intentionally coming together in small groups and, and bands and societies to study and deepen their faith in Christ and, and look at the Bible. They reached out to feed the hungry and they visited the sick and the imprisoned and they generously gave of their resources to keep the movement going. Wesley's known for saying, give all you can. Well, I'm start, well, how does this start? Earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. Earn all you can. It's important that, that, that we get out there and have productive lives that, that try to begin to, to, to earn something. But why are we doing that? We're doing it so that we have the resources not to go off and spend it all just on ourselves. We're trying to earn all we can and save all we can. And by saving all you can, Wesley didn't mean, you know, socking it away in a bank. He meant be frugal. He meant, you know, uh, do you really need that... Uh, $15 steak when a $4 hamburger will do just as good. Uh, maybe that's a bad example, but you know, you know, that's what I mean. You, know, you, know, you, you get what I mean. You know, um, you know, you know, why do you have to buy it at oh, Bloomingdale's when you could get it at TJ Maxx? You know, it's that. It's that, that sort of thing. You know? Um, yeah, fifty percent off. So, yeah, 50% off, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, the fruit of God's presence. Amen. The fruit of God's presence was actually the practices that that church in Wesley's day adopted. We were called Methodists. Because we had practices that we did. We had practices that, that, that uh, were, were stay in love with God. That's right. You know? mm -hmm. To stay in love with God. And he, by that, Wesley met, well, he said, attend to the ordinances of God. And that means, like, make sure you're in regular Bible study. Make sure you're with a group of people sharing your life and encouraging yourself in your faith development. You know, make sure you take time alone and time in a group to, to have your devotions. Come to worship. You know, these things deepen our relationship with God and help us uh, go deeper so that we will bear fruit. And when we're bearing fruit, others see that. And others see that something that, that they want. I want to know, how did you get this in your life? How can you be so on top of things when uh, things are uh, going haywire? Are you playing with your toys, Crane? Yeah. No, I can play with my John Wesley had 
clear guidelines for anybody that he put in a leadership position. You know, uh, whenever somebody was a candidate for, for any kind of leadership in that early Methodist movement, John Wesley would, would examine them, or somebody would examine them, with these questions. Is there faith? Is there fire? Is there fruit? Faith, fire, and fruit. You know, where is the faith? Where is the fire? Where is the fruit? We need to be asking ourselves these questions. Where is that in our life before God? Where is our faith in God? You know, faith is a whole lot more than just believing that God is God. In James it says even the, the demons believe that there's one God. Faith is a lot more than just believing God. Faith is acting on that belief. Trusting, putting your hope in God that you can do the right thing and trust God for the outcome. Where is the fire? I don't know if you, if, if you're like me, it's the fire that really gets me going. I really want that that sense of fire and being empowered and, and moving forward. You know, and that's really what uh, you know. I don't know. I have to think about this because I'm talking off the top of my head right now. But but somehow that. That inspires me more than, than anything else, just to have the fire, you know? Um, and uh, it's, you know, that's more important to me than, than you know, where I, I might be living or uh, the kind of work I might be doing or, uh, you know, what I own or possess. Or, and if I have fire, I have a sense of passion about my life and what God is calling me to do. That's, that's what has driven me forth, is wanting that fire. And maybe that's selfish, because sometimes I think I want the, the, the fire of God more than the fruits of God. Um, and I think, I'm being honest, I'm, uh, you know, this is uh, confession to my folks. Uh, but I think it really is, when you look at it from God's perspective, it's the fruit. It's the fruit. Are we bearing fruit in our lives? Bishop Robert Snazy. Some of you have read his book, The uh, five Practices of Fruitful Congregations. And, and uh, 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 he's written a book that helps us stay connected to God. Because this connection to God is what will give us the faith, the fire, and the fruit. And, and uh, he's saying that, that congregations that have faith, fire, and fruit are committed to these five practices. And you've heard me talk about them before, and I've kind of talked about them in what I've been sharing with you already. <clears throat> Radical hospitality. Yeah. Passionate worship. Intentional faith development. Risk-taking mission and service. And extravagant generosity. It, it, you know, I know I've preached on this before, and you're going to hear more in 2016, because I, I really believe that these are the vehicles, these are the means of grace that are going to help us live in the presence of God. And, it, and it's kind of like, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Because it's kind of like, you know, do you have radical hospitality, passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and service, and extravagant generosity 
first to be able to, to, to be empowered by the, the, the Holy Spirit? Or does the Holy Spirit come and empower you to have all of these? It kind of all works together. We have to take a, We can't wait for God to act. We need to act. And then God will begin to move and work in us and even empower what we're doing even more. All we have to do is ask. God changes lives through congregations. Rise and Hope is about changing lives, bringing the power of Christ and the support of the church to our community. It's a congregation. There is so much more power in a congregation than an individual. As a congregation, we become the body of Christ. We become His real presence in the community. Are we being the real presence of Jesus Christ in this community? We can be. That's what God wants us to be. And we are moving in that direction. But it takes our effort. It takes us to be able to make that happen. These practices, radical hospitality, passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and service, and exact ex extravagant <laughs> generosity. Um, these practices will stir our church to unexpected renewal and expanded vision. We are called to change the world, starting right here in our community. Man. It starts with us. Another world is possible. Uh, we have to repent and believe the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. 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 Amen.